Hello and welcome to another Top Junglers video and normally I don't do these so close together but these scuttle crab changes have shifted things around along with the direct nerfs that Riot gave to certain champions. And with that in mind, we are altering the nature of the video just a little bit. Usually I go through quite a long list of junglers and talk about them, but now we're going to refine that just a little bit and focus on the best junglers you can pick up in solo queue, no matter what your rank may be, as well as focus on some hidden OPs that you can use both in their lower and higher MMR ranges. And as per usual, it is not a cut and dry tier list, just a suggestion for champions you can try if you want to maximize your LP gains and climb the ladder. But if you're having success with something a bit off meta, a bit less used, let us know in the comments what that is and of course keep on using it. And should you want to pick up one of these champions, head to u.gg's builds and rune page for the best win rate items, rune sets and skill ability order. And you can also use their items and rune build pages to come up with new ways to play the champion and perhaps find that new winning combination that no one else has tried. So for all of your League of Legends needs in 30 seconds or less, head to the link in the description. And now we begin with our top tier junglers and Hecarim was accompanied by Rek'Sai and Jarvan in the last edition of this video, but now it's just Hecarim by himself. Yes, he just received some nerfs, but honestly, they were just a little bit of a love tap and overall his heal and total package is still a force to be reckoned with. So keep an eye on him in upcoming patch notes and maybe the pony will become a donkey again. Now Master Yi's win rate, as we've talked about, his usage rate, it cannot be ignored in all MMR ranges. However, they are giving him some notable changes coming up in patch 9.10, and I am not a Master Yi one trick. However, those that do play him are expressing concern about how it's going to turn him out in the coming weeks. So do keep an eye on those changes and on the win rate just to see how the changes to Master Yi, as well as the Rage Blade, affect his overall effectiveness in games, because he has been quite difficult to deal with for a while now. Now next up, some of you might be a little bit surprised to see a Mumu, but what happens when you change the Scuttle spawn from, you know, 2 minutes to 3.15? It gives tank junglers, it gives level 3 junglers much more power because they do not have to show early to dual enemy junglers, and when you have 3 sets of spells versus 2, that can affect you. It also means that a Mumu has more time to get through his clear without those invades, without the aggressive Zins and Jarvans of the world looking just to annihilate him at his second buff. You add in Cinder Hulk buffs and Mumu buffs recently, CC that lasts about 3 years, unparalleled teamfight ability, and all of a sudden his tears of sadness feel more like some kind of burning acid rain. For the next two here we have similar playstyles, good level 3 fighters, good team fighters. They do have different roles a little bit in the game, you know, Visor, Diver, Jax can also, but he has a much better split push. They can both take those Heralds and Dragons very quickly. Good Scuttle Crab control at level 3. This benefits Vi even more. Jax the same. And what happens when Cinder Hulk has a few buffs? Vi and Jax can both build damage and tank here. And when you have versatility in your builds, when you're ahead or behind, as well as the ability to affect team fights, ganks, towers, you really have a nice well-rounded package that can be very difficult to deal with and because of the scuttle delay it's just opened up their possibilities even more. And on that note Karthus returns to the first page once again and for some reason he just doesn't seem to die and no I'm not just referring to his passive but the fact that the level 2 meta is gone means you do not have to leave your jungle so soon you can clear your whole jungle take some crabs farm without the pressure of having to contest early crabs with your laners and this just gives you more time to scale with less worry about junglers invading you considering the jungles that you, if you have an Amumu against you you're not too concerned about them invading you. Just remember you are not just an alt bot even if that's the meme joke you can have good lane impact beforehand your W combined with your Q spam makes you quite difficult to deal with in certain 1v1 matchups as well. Alright, onto the second page, and there isn't too much, you know, gap between page 1 and 2. These are all strong jungles that you can use, and notably, Ramus, as we've become accustomed to saying for some strange reason, as well as Nunu, make up the trifecta of best solo queue tanks at the moment. When the counters to these champions go down, they get nerfed. When the Cinder Hulk item gets buffed, they just come up stronger. Ramus was never really that bad, same with Nunu. So whenever these buffs take place, they just get a little bit more of a power spike. Amumu, I think, is still a better all-rounded tank in terms of team fighting and so on, but Ramus and Nunu definitely have their place. And if your team is looking for a tank, both of them are very strong throughout most phases of the game. But let's not forget Kha'Zix, yes he doesn't go so well into tanks in the late game, but his isolation damage, his full kit, means he's always going to be somewhat viable in the jungle unless his numbers are just too low, or you know there's an overwhelming tank presence or something like that. The goal is a bit more to get ahead as soon as possible, to start picking people off, 
to end the game before it gets to that stage we've got you know Amumu's grouping with Galios at 35 minutes you don't really want to be in those kind of games so make sure you are increasing the pressure as much as you can look at my oppressive early jungle game if you want to look how to use a Kha'Zix to really take the enemy jungle out of the game as well as snowball a win quickly and now let's talk about Udyr. Yes, he was top tier not too long ago. He was having a nice run under the radar. Most people not really noticing his level two power spike, which is basically the best in the game. And he could always just run across the mid lane, taking two crabs at two minutes without too much concern. This gave him nice leads and ganks for objective control. And all in all, he could shut you out of the game without really doing much of anything. However, it's simply a case of matchups. Now this crab comes at level three for all junglers. That means they can match up better with him and they can also even have lane impact and get a laner ahead before the scuttle spawns which gives them the added benefit of having a 2v1 situation which is naturally not as beneficial as a level 2 1v1 slap fight where he has giant claws and you perhaps are wearing mittens. And finally, I debated and thought hard about who else should be on this page. We have Sejuani, of course, with tank buffs. Honestly, there are better tanks for solo queue and in high elo if you're going to play a player. Kane, specifically Blue Kane, because of those e-buffs, has shot up in popularity despite the fact that Rust loves to go against tanks and he's much arguably a better choice against them. But when you have picks like Karthus, the blue cane can definitely be super useful. His damage, his mobility is really insane and he's pulling off basically the mantle for best assassin jungler in the game right now. Don't forget you can go red cane if the team comp demands it. You can dive back line, survive and disrupt as you need to do. However, you can go the pretty boy if you're looking for that full on penetration. And next up we have Evelyn always on the cusp, always used a decent amount, still banned quite a lot all the time because people just don't want to deal with the inevitability that when, if a team holds out long enough and you don't have vision down, she will flank you and she will kill your ADC or at least someone in one shot and then be out of the situation before you can even CC her. Most notably watch the patch notes if that runic echoes price decrease goes through because that will not only benefit Karthus like he really needs it, it will really help Evelyn just get to that power spike a little bit sooner because her 1 through 6 is something you want to navigate well and anything that gives a champion like Evelyn more AP, more stats earlier for less, well that's just a straight buff. Alright on this page we're going to talk about some specific cases that are not necessarily top tier, however in the right hands they can be, as well as some hidden OPs and just general discussion points. And on that note, the Lightning Bear is here. The Cinderhawk buffs, the Volley Bear W buffs, really, really nice. He's a good early mid-game duelist, much more so than a lot of champions. And the fact that the Scuttle spawn at level 3 gives him that chain CC and bite needed to take that while also impacting lanes, which is what you want to do before you hit level 6 and start smacking people with electricity and stuff. And, you know, like, can we have a better ultimate, please? Also, don't forget to vote for Volley Bear for the rework. Don't listen to Red Mercy on Twitter. Not Nocturne. Go for Volley. And now for Kindred, still strong, still, you know, holding on to that mantle of best marksman jungler. However, when you move the mark spawn time back 1 minute 15, that's just the delay to reach at 4 marks, which is a nice power spike in terms of your range. At the same time, think about this. If you took, you know, at 2 minutes the level 2 scuttle and got your mark, and then you had a really good early game, you could have 2 marks before 315 even came about. Maybe 3 if you beat the enemy jungler 1v1. None of that can take place now until 315 and most likely you're only going to have one if you get a good gank off or something like that, which isn't always likely. So they've definitely been impacted and you can see in the win rate that has dropped, however, in the right hands with a duo with a Zulu, wait Zulu, I meant to say Zilin and Lulu, but Zulu works I guess, also I'm from South Africa, so full circle right there. Okay, moving on. Rek'Sai and Jarvan, I've grouped them together. Rek'Sai definitely got nerfed a bit more than Jarvan, however they both did just get hit and their power levels, their win rates did go down below that 50% threshold, however you're seeing a lot of them still in high elo along with the Hecarim because they just have really good kits for what they do. Rek'Sai again, we're falling back to that. She's still stronger than she was, but you must end the game. You can't afford to mess around and think you're waiting for late game. Jarvan is a byproduct of his kit and lockdown will still be kind of useful. However, the rest of the champions on these first two pages are better picks than he is now. On that note, you've got the high elo Lee Sin Elise combo, both great in the right hands. Elise, again, I'm mentioning her because of the runic echoes buff that's coming through. She's you see Night Blue using her, you see certain people using her to get good wins. I don't recommend her unless you are at least, you know, a minimum plat. Yeah, if you win with her, I mean, great, but be honest with yourself. She is much more complicated to pull off successfully than other champions. And on that note, so is Talia. 
Runic Echo's buffs are going to be very good for her, and if any of you watch Challenger VODs just to get better, to see what they're playing, you see a lot of Talia in that ranked bracket, so keep an eye on her perhaps rising in popularity and effectiveness as well. And finally, because this is for patch 9.10 and I want this to last a little bit longer, keep an eye on those Q buffs for Graves that we may see come through in the patch notes on Tuesday. They will just give him a bit more damage as you max that Q ability. And having ranged junglers come through again is also good when you're against tanks. And I'm sure some people will be very happy about this. But Trundle is going to be coming through a little bit, I think. If you see a lot of tanks in pro play, if you see a lot of tanks in solo queue, sort of increasing usage rate. Trundle is a great anti-tank champion and his effectiveness only increases the more tanks that are running around. Okay, thank you very much for watching. This was a bit more streamlined. We covered some of the best junglers for you to use, as well as some specific cases that may be useful in the right hands or right situations. I put some notes on the bottom left of the screen. Zin is getting buffs. Warwick is still good for low and mid MMRs. I use him myself still. I enjoy it. He's one of my go-tos. Hopefully these champions can give you something to pick to gain you some wins. Please do like, share, and comment if you enjoyed and learned something. It does help the video. Please subscribe for more League of Legends and Jungle videos coming very soon. And as always, I will see you all in the next tutorial.